So you got your home studio set up, you record some vocals, and now you're like, why does this not sound right? The truth is raw vocals need a lot of help to sit in the mix right. And that's where the vocal chain comes in. And I'll show you how to set it up properly in this video. When I was starting out, I had no clue just how much of what I was doing was terribly incorrect and my sound suffered because of it. At the time, YouTube was a new thing and there weren't any videos like this available to me to help me out. So congrats. You can easily level up your recording by following videos like this and bonus points if you hit that subscribe button. So we're gonna talk about a lot of plugins today. If you just got Pro Tools, then you probably just have the stock plugins. So we will build a vocal chain using only those stock plugins, but then I'm gonna share with you my favorite free plugins that you can go grab today. The paid plugins I use are anywhere from $29 to like $500-ish, but I don't want you having to worry about spending all this money right away. Do it over time, one thing at a time, and that's really the best way to do it. We are gonna focus on the vocal chain today, which is a very important piece of the recording and mixing puzzle, but it is just one piece. A couple weeks ago, I released a video about setting up your template, which is like setting up the full session, all your tracks, all the busing, routing, etc., and saving that in your system. So every time you open a new session, Everything is already set up and ready to go. You need that so you can create more and program less. So if you need help with that stuff too, I'll drop the link to that video in the description below. By the way, my name is Kimara. I'm a producer, songwriter, singer, and Pro Tools veteran of 15 years. Nice to meet you if you're new to my channel. We want our vocals to sound like they blend with the track, and we also want to use plugins in a tasteful way so it sounds like a real voice of someone who's actually singing in the same room as you. We don't want vocals to sound unnatural natural, unless we're going for that specific effect. First off, what is a vocal chain? How do we define this? Your vocal chain is everything that processes your audio from the hardware into the software and then out your speakers. Think of it like a chain of events. Your hardware vocal chain is going to be your microphone through your mic cable into input one on your interface. And then your interface sends it from input one to input one in Pro Tools. That's where we hit the software part of the vocal chain, which is what we're focusing on today. When we record, our audio arrives on input one on the track that we are recording to. And just personally, whenever I record, I record onto a recording track and then I drag it to my audio tracks. And from there, like here's my lead vocal track. It's going out bus one and two, as you can see. And bus one and two is being received over here. We'll call this the software vocal chain. Basically, this is going to be plugins that help us with our tone and our dynamics. Stuff like reverb and delay, the fun effects, we're going to call those the effects chains. So a quick note, when I say the word chain, I'm often just referring to an auxiliary track. So I might say my effects chains, blah, 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 blah. I'm referring to the auxiliary track that that effect is sitting on. Um, so when I talk about vocal chains, I'm talking about my auxiliary track that is hosting my plugins for tone shaping and dynamics on my voice. And what's very important to note is that it is a chain of events. So whatever you do in order, it's compounding. So it's really important to start with a good quality audio signal, meaning your gain level is not too hot. It's distorting because once it's distorting, plugins can't really help you from there. Plugins can help you more if it's too quiet, so I always err on the side of caution. Keep your recording level a little on the lower side, but you're gonna want it basically to be landing around here where it's still green, but not quite touching the yellow just yet. Yes, technically, if it's yellow, that's still considered good signal, but if I get a little heated on a vocal take and I jump up into the red, that take is ruined. So I'd rather not live dangerously and just keep my signal a little too low and I'll just rely on plugins to make my vocal a little bit louder later. So with that, you got a good audio signal, you have a good level. So I'm just gonna whiz through a simple vocal chain that you can do with stock plugins in Pro Tools but then I'll do a really in-depth walkthrough showing you the ones that I use. So first things first, I will put a de -esser. So that's going to be under your Dynamics, and it's probably going to be the Dyn3 de -esser. Then I'm going to put an EQ. So probably your EQ37 band. Then I'm going to put a compressor, most likely Dyn3 compressor limiter. So super quick, compression, what it's gonna do is basically help you, when you're singing too loud, it's gonna automatically turn you down. 
And the way you control that is um, basically with the threshold and the ratio. Those are your two most important things. I kind of like, some people like three to one. I like two to one. So if I am singing, and this is my level in decibels, right? If I'm singing pretty loud and I'm getting closer to this threshold, as soon as I start to go above this level, it's going to start turning me down at a ratio of two to one. So for every two decibels over this threshold, I'm singing it's going to turn me down one decibel. So if I'm singing four decibels too loud, it's going to turn me down two. Anything too tight might start to sound funny. It's gonna sound like the slammy, smashy effect. Attack and release are kind of just the slope of how fast it starts turning you down. So if you hit that threshold, your attack and your attack is super tight, it's like on zero, it's like the fader instantly going like this. But if you have a slightly longer attack and release, kind of going to be like turning you down and then turning you up like a little bit of a slope. After your compressor, I like to add a limiter, which unfortunately, I don't think Pro Tools stock comes with any free ones. But I highly, highly recommend everyone go out and get Kilo Hearts freebie bundle. It comes with a limiter. And with this, I can really rock my threshold to make our signal a bit louder. So let me show you my settings and I'll go a bit more in depth on all of these. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I put a de first on my vocal chain. This is the one I use, Waves de an absolute classic. A lot of people actually put it last on the chain, but my S's are kind of crazy. So I put it first because again, I want to set the next plugin up for success. And if, if I'm sending S's that are really prominent into my EQ next, I might not lift my high end as high as I could to give it a lot of sparkle because it's starting to annoy the S's even more. So if I DS before, I think my EQ settings will be a little more honest. So with that being said, I use the Pro Q 3 by Fab filter and I have a very beautiful microphone. I use the Manly Studio Reference microphone and it's just such a beautiful clean sound that I don't need to fix the sound very much with EQ. So I just give it a little bit of shine on the top end and the mid top. Once in a while, I pull down a little bit here, but lately I haven't been doing that with my EQ. I've been using Soothe 2 to help me pull down the resonant frequencies around 3K that I get a little nasally at. <laughs> I am recording in this vocal booth back here and so my sound is very controlled. So I do not do the standard low cut that a lot of people do. I would say this is for you if you have a lot of room hum or there's just potential for the room making noise. But my voice doesn't have problematic low end frequencies. So I don't even put this here and I let the full spectrum of my voice come through. Next in my chain, you might see an inactive plugin. I keep this here just in case, but I don't use it too often. Uh, let's turn it on, by the way. This is the C1 gate. If I'm going for a very tight, in-your-face, non-reverberated sound for, you know, I do that a lot in like sync licensing type music, very, very dry in your face. I really want there to be no little hum, hiss, or anything mouth sounds between words. So I'll put on this gate so that any very, very quiet sounds are turned off between words. And honestly, this perfect voiceover gates preset is perfect. Next in the chain, I use Wave CLA-2A. Just a quick note, a lot of compressors and some EQs as well may have this analog function. Um, if they default to having like 50 hertz or 60 hertz, that means it's adding a vintage hiss. And... I don't like that. I want a very clean sound. It's 2024, so I always make sure if I see anything that says analog, I turn it off. Next, I've been using Soothe 2, and um, I've just been using the de-honk preset because that's kind of targeting that honky nasal uh, frequency that my voice really resonates at. Um, I don't put the depth too high or it'll start to sound kind of sh like shishy. You'll hear it. Um, so yeah, Soothe to Abuse is a real thing. A lot of people put this a little too high and then it starts to get like shishy. We'll use a limiter next, which looks a lot like a compressor because um, it is in the compressor family, but it helps us basically make our signal a little louder. I know a lot of people are wondering why their vocals sound so quiet against the instrumental. Well, it's because the instrumental is usually mixed with limiters 
to make it louder and your vocal is still pretty raw. So let's give ourselves a little boost and put on a limiter. I just put a little bit of a ceiling and then I pull the threshold down until my levels of my audio are closer to the orange, but not quite in the red. Uh, not slamming into the ceiling. So that's pretty much what you need to complete a decent vocal chain, but that is not where the vocal signal ends. We're gonna send some of our vocal signal using sends to our special effects, like our reverbs and stuff. And we're gonna control how much we send with this fader, which I got right here. Again, if you're feeling a little confused about the routing of all this, check out the template video. I explain extensively how routing works. So this amount of audio is going through the reverb and then it's coming out one and two, which is our speakers. Our mastering chain kind of overrides everything. So everything we put on our mastering chain will affect everything in our session. Okay, so again, those stock plugins that you have are very, very basic. So I do recommend that you Go check out some of the free plugins that you can download and install them today. I'm gonna run through a list of my favorite free plugins. But before I give you those, hook me up with a subscribe. And if you're like, I just want someone to set all this up for me, I don't wanna do this, I got you. You can just buy my template on my website. Use code YouTube for a discount. That comes with two templates, one with the free stock plugins that Pro Tools comes with, and one with all the plugins that I use that I have paid for over time. It also comes with a 45 minute training on how to use it all, so you can get recording right away. You can grab it at the link in the description below. And those are Kilo Hearts, Kilo Hearts Essentials Bundle. That's gonna include EQs, compressors, and some fun effects as well. I think there's like 30 plugins in that suite. So you should definitely go get Kilo Hearts. Valhalla does have, I think they have a few free ones. I think Supermassive, Space Modulator, and Freak Echo are free. Those are reverbs and delays. I personally use Valhalla Room as my reverb, um, which is 50 bucks. Melda Productions does have a freebie bundle that does include a pitch correction plugin. It might even be the only free pitch correction plugin for Pro Tools that I know of. So definitely check out Melda, M-E-L-D-A. By the way, if you have any plugin recommendations, please let me know in the comments. Let us all know we're all looking for recommendations. Slate Fresh Air is another really good free one. It's a top end exciter. Um, it's very popular to give you like a sparkly high-end air band. And then Isotope has a couple free plugins. I know um, Ozone Imager, Vocal Doubler. Softube has a saturation plugin for free. Saturation is like that heat distortion kind of sound. So yes, definitely go check all of those out. But yeah, the basics are very important, but don't settle for vocals that are basic. I've got a video coming out in two weeks. If it's already out, I'll link it in the description below where I'm gonna really go over these effects chains and how you can make these super special. But in the meantime, let's listen to these 15 plugins by Sound Toys. I'll run my vocals through them and you might hear something that you wanna add to your signature sound. Take a listen. <laughs> 